Let us remain standing just a moment for prayer. Shall we bow our heads? Almighty God, who brought again our Lord from the dead, raised him up on the third day according to the scriptures, and has seated him at your right hand in glory. There he is tonight to make intercessions upon our confession, sending back the great Holy Spirit to continue the work that he began, that it might always be known that this Holy Spirit that carries on the work of the Lord Jesus is to be a sign that he will return someday. And now, Father, we are living to see this end time. When we are seeing the approaching of the Lord, the sign poster out, every hour makes us think that it's the grace of God that he hasn't already come. Maybe, Lord, it's for us to preach harder, pray more, and try to get that last soul into the kingdom before that final midnight stroke on the clock of time when it will strike no more when it strikes that time it'll blend into an endless eternity Lord may we think on these things now as the service continues for we ask it in Jesus name who gave the promise Amen. You may be seated. I'm beginning to feel just a teeny bit tired. I just kind of hate to admit that, but it's, it's truth. And having many services, and tomorrow I'll have three services, one with the Armenian people down in Downey, my subject is, what hearest thou to you Armenians is to be there tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon at the temple here, my subject is to this, be sure of God. And after that service tomorrow, we are going to give out the prayer cards for a regular prayer line tomorrow night. And the boys will be giving the cards out immediately after the service tomorrow afternoon for they're having on Sunday evening a concert here at the temple therefore it would be hard to give out the prayer cards then so all that desires to have a card to be called into the prayer line tomorrow night you come till tomorrow afternoon service that you might get the card and then I think Monday is an off night. And then all next week, the Lord willing, I want to begin to speak Tuesday night on a series of subjects out of Genesis on faith. And we would in, be highly desirous that you would come and hear because I'm expecting the Lord to do great things. Then if it be the will of God, I haven't did this for seven years now, but if it be the will of God, next Sunday afternoon I want to tell my life story here at the temple. I haven't told it now or approached it. It tears me up so. For seven years, I think, since I have told my life story. If the Lord is willing, I feel strong and up to it next Sunday afternoon. That's Sunday a week now. We had a wonderful time down at Clifton's this morning in the breakfast, the Christian businessman's uh, breakfast. When I was sitting eating, there was a, a little woman came up to me. I'm sure I can't say this name just right. It's uh, an Armenian name, Shaviskin, I think, something like that. And she came to me and a few nights ago, they had a, a call from Switzerland to where her sister was laying seriously ill. 
was sugar diabetes and pneumonia, which just meant death in a few hours. And this woman's husband is a very good friend of mine and his family. And they were very nice to me when we were in Switzerland some time ago. And then they visit together with me here in America. However, I failed to get the word that they had sent to me because no one bothers me for quite a time before I come to the service. But while the service was going on, the Holy Spirit turned me to her in the audience and told her that she was praying for her loved one. And not to fear because they were going to be all right. And this morning early, the phones connected across the ocean over the Atlantic cable to this country to tell her that the woman is absolutely, perfectly well and normal. The blessings of the Holy Spirit. Can't you see God is covers all space and fills all time and runs into eternity. I've seen him do that so many times for people across the sea. How that God does those things so wondrously. So today has been a great day for me. And now I appreciate the little sister singing that song just a few moments ago. Watching his star. Because I thought tonight being rather a short night, I would speak on that. Watching his star. And I want to refer to it as the same light or star is a light that we see appear here that they have the pictures of it and so forth. For it is the same one. The same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. The same angel of the covenant. And we are trusting that he will come in our midst again tonight. And will guide us to the Christ. And now for a text I want you to turn to St. Matthew's Gospel, the second chapter. Now, we do not know what he will do. It's been three nights now that we haven't given out any prayer cards. And the Holy Spirit has been going over the meetings, calling the people and telling them just like he did when he was here on earth in the form of the Lord Jesus, fulfilling a promise that he made to be the last sign before his appearing and the ending of the Gentile dispensation. And remember that it's the last sign. Next week we'll try to get into it deeply where you can see that all the things has led right up to this hour. And the church is now in condition that it should receive these things. Now I want to read, you have turned perhaps to the scriptures. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. It must have been about dark. They had just got to the top of the hill. And as they turned around the corner, they were facing Bethlehem, which the mountain lays west of the city and he stopped and wiped the perspiration from his forehead as he helped the halter 
straying from the little donkey, and he looked down into the little city, and the lights are burning because there were many people crowding in and out. You see, there was a a degree had went out that all people must come back to their birthplace to be taxed. And any heartless brute man that would have caused a woman in her condition to have to leave her home to make that long journey on the back of a little donkey. But long before time ever began, this was all planned in the wisdom of God. God always has everything just at the minute. And all things work together for good uh, to them that love him. And we would think of it that way when we think of just the time that that brutal, murderous king was reigning. And at the time that the taxes had to force Joseph and Mary up to Bethlehem. And as Joseph was looking down into the valley, no doubt, but he was rather discouraged when he thought of his wife in her condition. And if every little motel was filled up, There was no room and the people were sleeping along the side of the walls. It must have been discouraging to him. As he thought of that heartless king would have forced his lovely little wife to come to her birthplace. Perhaps he didn't know that it was all moving in God's great cycle. But when he turned to pick her off the little donkey and found a suitable little rock as they had turned the top of the hill so she could look off down to her birthplace. And walking gently with her over and setting her down on a, a nice place so she could rest a little. He noticed her pretty face. That it seemed to shine with a a radiance that had never shined like that before. And maybe he said something like this. Oh my dear, I've always known that you was a most outstanding, beautiful woman. But I have never seen you so pretty as you are now. I wonder what the church ought to look like. How pretty it ought to be in order at the coming of the Lord. Its robe should be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And all the divine orders of God set perfectly in order in it. No friction, just waiting for that moment. God will have it that way. And we see him as he noticed her beautiful face. And he said, Mary, your face just shines. But it seems that She didn't notice him too much. Her lovely eyes were looking towards the skies. And he followed her direction of sight. And he noticed hanging over the little city one of the most beautiful stars he ever seen in all his life. And he perhaps said something like this. That star, 
I haven't noticed it till just now. That's where that reflection is coming from upon your lovely face. Oh, if God tonight could just reflect His grace upon the church and His beauty. And He wants to do it when the church will get itself ready for the event. And she said something like this perhaps. Joseph, just as soon as the sun began to go down, when we were yet at the bottom of the mountain, I noticed that star. And it seems to me that it's followed me all the way up the mountain. I just couldn't keep my eyes off of it. And he, he caught her by the hand. And as they two, the young couple standing there, just a few hours before the birth of the greatest one that ever walked on earth, holding her hands, they faced the east towards that great star that hung over Bethlehem. Let's journey on eastward for a little while. Way into the extreme east, across the valleys, over the mountains, to the extreme east there was some magis, which were known in the days of Daniel to be the Medes or Persians. They worshiped one true God. They waited on him by a sacred fire. And they would go up to the top of the mountain. And they studied all the heavenly bodies. For they had learned in Job and of the moving of the stars and the names of the stars. And they watched for that one true God to give them a sign by the stars. And they studied those stars just like we study the Bible. It was handed down scrolls from ancient fathers as they studied those heavenly bodies. And they know where everyone was. And if one moved the least bit out of its place, they knew it. Night after night, they held their ceremonies. And now they believed that there was one true God. We know them today mostly as Mohammedans. Then as they sat Watching, they would build a fire and watch, worship God by singing sacred hymns and watching the fire. And, and they would uh, discuss scriptures and so forth. And then they would climb up into this great tower like an observatory. And they would watch the bodies of the skies all night long. And they believed that the moving of them meant different signs to them from the God of the fire. And one night while they were sitting, perhaps discussing the rising of kingdoms and the fall of empires and the things that had taken place in the earth, ancient histories and so forth, it must have been about the time that they picked up the scroll of Daniel and was reading in Daniel because he must have conversed with them. Daniel 2 said that he was their chief. And so they must have conversed with him and they picked up a scroll where Daniel had prophesied that there would come a time when there'd be a stone cut out of the mountain without hands and it would 
tear down the kingdoms of the world. They must have been reading that. And then it, they'd had some of the Hebrew scrolls, scrolls of back in Numbers. Where that Balaam said there would be a star of Jacob rise. And it must have been the time that they were thinking on these things and discussing this, that the stranger appeared in the skies. You know what it would have meant to those people. How that if a strange star, them knowing everyone and had named them and their courses, and all of a sudden, here's one that's brighter than them all. For we know he is the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the fairest of ten thousands to our soul. This new visitor in the heavens must have alarmed them. Someone might think that those magi's would not have been a privileged people to have seen this. But if you'll read in the book of Acts, Peter said that he perceived that God was no respect of person and that he would, he would visit those or re accept those, receive those of any nation that feared him and worked righteousness. God is no respect of person. And then someone, see what the brother wants. Then some, one must have seen that heavenly visitor and said, wonder what this means. They couldn't understand why that these magis, people today don't understand. Did you know those magis saw that star and it passed over the observatories and we don't have any history of anybody else ever seeing it. Why? Because they wasn't looking for it. I believe they saw the star. The Bible said they saw it. That's the reason today that people don't see the things that they should see. The mysteries of God being unfolded because they're not looking for it. God only reveals himself to those who will let him and expecting him. Oh, have you noticed in the last two or three nights of service that the Holy Spirit has brought us to that place each night? The expecting scene. Somebody who's being led and expecting something to happen. The thing of it is we're not expecting enough. If the people here tonight that's sick and afflicted come with expectations of going home well, you'll go home well. If you here tonight has never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Oh, it may be mysterious to you, but as long as God's Word teaches it, that's enough. God said so, and that settles it. And for myself, I'm expecting something to happen. It is written, when the people that are called by my name shall assemble themselves together and pray, then I'll hear from heaven. And I've been praying today and I know that others have been praying and I'm expecting something to happen. There may be things happen that will go right over the head of people. Many who are not ordained to life will never be able to see it. When Jesus came, there were tens of thousands, yes, millions looking for him to come. And he just revealed himself to a little handful. See, it's those who are looking for something. Those who have a, a pulsation in their heart beating. 
waiting, longing for something to happen. It's those who believe it'll happen and waiting for the event. That's who Jesus will come for, for those who love his appearing. If you love anybody and you're expecting them to appear, you're making every preparation for it. That's the way the church should be tonight. Making every preparation for the coming of the Lord. Watching every signpost. And when you see God do something, rejoice. Because it's pointing to His coming. And we're down to the about the last signpost now. He could appear before morning. How those magi's, when this star appeared, they begin to search the scrolls. And they found that it was a prophecy being fulfilled. Oh, they must have had an exceeding great joy among them. When they seen that God had spoke, that that star would appear, and there it was. I wonder if those magis that we try to say astronomers and so forth, wonder if we could condemn them looking on us just one little set of scrolls when we've had the Bible and teachers and God placing before us His signs and wonders and we walk away from it. Why it ought to set a revival that would burn out the dross of Los Angeles. It's enough to do it. The signs that he said would be here. Oh, how I love to see the scripture unfolding. Just like the clock on the wall beating away the time. And when they were noticing that, and perhaps one of them said, Look! I wonder if that doesn't compare with that scroll that Daniel let us have called the book of Numbers. When the prophet Balaam said that there would be a star rise out of Jacob. I wonder if that's a star. Another said, we have never seen anything like it. And they must have had a real jubilee then. They left the fire and went up on the tower to watch that beautiful heavenly gift moving in the sky. You say a gift. Yes, it was a gift to them. To guide them to the Savior. They believed their gift that was sent to them. But God has sent in this last days the Holy Spirit, the gift of God to guide us to Jesus. And still we don't believe it. I'm talking about the world. And you out in radio land tonight, I want you to think of that. How can you stay home when there's a revival in the city? Where the Lord God is manifesting Himself. A true hungry heart wants to get close to God and they'll go to every move that they know that comes from God. They'll search and seek and hunger and thirst. They long to see God. Come take the Bible and like the Magi's did and read it and see if the scriptures compares with what's being done. Then if it is, you've got a right to rejoice with exceeding great joy. And as they went up night after night watching this new visitor, they had never seen anything like it. They know the scriptures said it would be there. But they had never in all their life ever seen such a gift in the heavens as what this one was. They studied it from every angle. 
And the only thing that they could say was, the scripture declares it. So one night we'd say while one was sitting up watching, studying, it began to move. And it began to go westward. And maybe while one was taking his rest, he raised up and said, Brethren, I just had a dream about that star. And that is a sign that the King God has been born. And he's a king of the Jews and he's a king of heaven. He's a king of all peoples. And we must go worship him. I'd imagine with such a confirmation as that, they got the richest things they could get together. Someone must go and take these gifts. Perhaps they cast lots. And it fell upon three of those. And they loaded their camels with gold, myrrh, and frankincense. And they waited until the star come out again at night. And they noticed it had moved from its place and was leading on westward. They got on their camels and up over the mountains. You know, sometimes the way he leads is pretty rugged. It don't make any difference which way he leads just so we get there. That's the main thing. As the poet has expressed it, some to the waters, some to the floods, some to deep trials, but all through the blood. God leads his children. And on the camels, they climb the mountains, rugged and steep, down to the valleys. That's the way we go, sometimes in the valley and sometimes on the mountain. But just keep following on. We'll arrive if we'll just keep following the leading of God's Spirit. And as they crossed the mountains, then they must have come down along southward. And when they crossed the Tigris River at the ford, got out into the plains, and the star never failed them. That's the beautiful part about a gift of God. It cannot fail because it's God. And they watched it. Night after night it led them, week after week, month after month, as they went through the valleys and plains and so forth. Finally it led right up to Jerusalem. And the strange thing was when it come to Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish religion, the, the seat of Jewish religion, where all the great patriarchs and the, and the great prophets of old had preached the gospel and foretold these things, the star led right straight to that place. But when they got there, the star went out. Why? Jerusalem wasn't looking for it. That's what's the matter today when we come to this social gospel teachings and so forth. Why can't they believe in the supernatural signs? They're not looking for it. The light's gone out. And they just worship God through creeds. But God is a spirit, said Jesus. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not creeds, not through the fussing about denominations, but in spirit of love and in truth. What is truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. 
Then when it got to Jerusalem and faded out, did you notice a gift will not stay or brighten itself or make itself known where it's not wanted? It'll fade out, get away. And then people would say, why, it should come to so-and-so because it's the greatest, it's the biggest that doesn't have anything to do with it at all. And then perhaps the Magi's thought, if that be the center of the Jewish religion, the main church was there. The body of the main believers was there as they thought to be the high priest. And all the great men that had the scrolls and their great schools was there. Surely that's where the king was. And as the star left them, they aroused the attention of the city as they went up and down the streets screaming, Where is he that's born king of the Jews? Could you imagine that? Up to every Broadway, down to the little side streets, they had to take notice to him they were rich men. Maybe I would call them today Christian businessmen. And they were riding on these camels decked with fine uh, decorations. They know there was something about the man. But the thing that alarmed them was this, the question they were asking. Where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and we're come to worship him. That's the hungry heart of a many a millionaire tonight wanting to find that real Holy Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost and the real gift of God. We have read it in the Bible where Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Where is it? We have read that he is a great healer. Where is it? We have read that the Holy Spirit is for you and for your children. And for them that's far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Where is it in our churches? Where is that power that sets a church of fire? That makes them turn off the television on Wednesday night to go to church. Where is that power that makes our ladies dress like women? Where is that power that sets the soul so afire that he's out on the field constantly testifying to the glory of God? Today, even in Pentecostal realms, they're becoming ashamed of the testimony. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, said Paul. For it is the power of God into salvation. It's not just a declaration of creeds. It's a power of God into salvation to everyone that believes. Why? The scripture said in the last days they'd be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, Want to be entertained. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. The days of miracles is past, they say. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost today like they had it on the day of Pentecost. That's just because they come too late to tell me about it. I've already got it and I know it's the truth. I know that that same Jesus that God raised up from the dead is my Savior and He lives in my heart and every heart of any believer that will accept Him. He'll change your life and give you a no-so salvation and a testimony of His resurrection. But Jerusalem didn't have the answer. 
The scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The church don't have the answer for that. They say he's partly what he was. He still wants us to preach the gospel, but signs and wonders do not appear yet. Jesus said, go into all the world. How far? All the world. And two-thirds of the earth has never heard the gospel yet. How long is the last? All the world. Who to every creature preach the gospel? What is the gospel? Paul said the gospel come not only through the word, but through power and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. And these signs shall accompany those that believe. Oh, that's what we need today. Brother, here tonight, if your church don't believe in that, you get it in your heart tonight and take it right back to the church. The world's asking today, where is that God? Where is that one that used to be? Where is that God of history? If the God of history isn't the same God today, what good does a God of history do you? If he isn't the same today. What happened to the great Jehovah, the all-powerful one? The El Shaddai. The I am, not the I was, the I am. What happened to him? There's nothing happened to him, it's happened to the people. They didn't have the answer, Jerusalem didn't. But they couldn't stop these fellows. They wanted to find him. Brother, if God's ever anchored something in your heart, a thirst to find him, there's nothing going to stop you from finding him. Up and down the streets, rich man, testifying like holy rollers. Where is he? Tell me where he is. That's born king of the Jews, for we've done seen his sign. And we've come to worship him. We saw his star in the east and come to worship him. They didn't have the answer. They haven't got it today. Same thing. Now notice, when God sends a sign into the church, the church fails to see it. Same as they did then. So, but they made so much fuss about it until they had to call out the Sanhedrin court to find out what all this was about. And when they got the court out and opened up the scriptures that perhaps they hadn't read, just their own creeds for years. But as they read the scriptures, they got Micah's prophecy and said, in Bethlehem of Judea, Listen, brother, if the church hasn't got the answer to these signs and wonders, the Word of God's got the answer. If your pastor hasn't got the answer, God's Word's got the answer. If you're hungering for it, God will show it to you in the Word. God keeps His Word. And as soon as they found out the place where that this was to take place, They left the city and the council sitting, thinking, what would they do? They'd have to get rid of this. This couldn't get breezed around amongst the people. They'd have to stop this because it would break up their tradition. They'd have to put an end to it. And as the wise men went out of the city gates, as soon as they got out of that gloomy place, the star appeared again. When you come out of the world and its traditions, the glory of God will appear to you and will lead you. When you come out of yourself and out of your sins, out of your unbelief, leave it all behind and raise your heart to God. God will appear to you. And when they seen that star again, the Bible said they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They must have shouted a little. Exceeding great joy. For they know they were following the sign that was going to lead them to the Savior. And it did just that. May I say tonight, 
that God has a sign today. It's a sign of His Spirit that where Jesus is, there's life. For He is life. Where Jesus is, there's gospel light. For He is light. Where Jesus is, there is fire. For He is a consuming fire that burns up all your unbelief and your dross. Night after night, we see Him coming on the scene, saving first the lost souls, giving to them the Holy Spirit that's seeking after it, calling back the backsliders. That's a sign to follow. And then we see Him also raise up the sick and the afflicted, making them well. He's been doing that along now for some time. Then at the end time, He promised there would be light. There would be the fullness of the power would be coming. The prophet said there will be a day that will not be neither night or day. But in the evening time, it shall be light. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west geographically. And the gospel first came to the easterners. We've had a day of neither dark nor light. Been a dismal day. We've known enough about God to accept Him. His Son is our Savior. But all the great signs and wonders that fell on the Eastern people has not fallen on the Western people until the last few years. Now, the evening lights are shining. The power of the resurrected Christ is pouring forth His blessings, filling the people with the Spirit, signs and wonders appearing. The signs of Mark 16 follow the believer. You see, it's evening time. And the same light that rose in the east is setting in the west. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and will be forever. And the Messiah sign has appeared. That he's with us, in us, and will comfort us, and will help us, and will bless us, and will lead us. To that one who was scarred in the hands, pierced in the side, I believe this same Holy Spirit that's here now will take us up someday to the right hand of God where we'll see Him setting. There we shall live with Him forever. And be His children, He'll be our God. That's my heart's desire, is to be with Him. We have seen His sign in the east, and we've come to worship him, said the Magi. The scripture promises Jesus himself did, said that the works that I do shall you do also. These things was to appear in the Gentile church. One word against it was never to be forgiven. But it would be the sign that it was back there, the same sun, the same light. And I believe that he's here now. If this audience who's sitting here now that's suffering, something is telling me to stop. I don't know why. I don't know no more than just to follow the leading of the Spirit. I had three or four more things in my mind, comments that I was going to make, but something said, now, stop. There must be somebody praying in this audience. There must be somebody seriously in trouble. That I don't know. But if you believe that the Lord Jesus who stood and could tell the apostle Peter who he was and what his father's name was and all the signs that he did like that which they crucified him for those signs and killed him a witch made him a Beelzebub, a devil. That same spirit that was on Jesus Christ is in his church. We'll yield ourselves now to his spirit. God will do the same thing. Do you believe it? Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, somehow, some way, I don't understand it. 
But thou does know, O Lord, there must be a terrific lot of suffering or someone, maybe just a few hours from death, that I do not know. But somehow that I want to follow like those magis, watching every move. For someday I expect this Holy Spirit to take me into your presence, to live with you forever. May I be reverent and respect it and watch it and obey it as long as I live. May this audience tonight, Lord, have their eyes of understanding open. May they have the Spirit of God upon them. For we have seen His star in the east, His sign. They did not have the answer to supernatural heavenly gifts and signs in Jerusalem. And Lord God, ashamed to say it tonight, but the churches today don't have the answer. Many of them, too many of them, don't have the answer to supernatural signs. They want to call it telepathy or some evil spirit. Not knowing that they're sealing their eternal destination by doing so. Let it be known tonight, Lord, that thou art God. The same Jesus that came from the grave in a bodily form is shared tonight in the form of the Holy Ghost. And may we be so able to humble our hearts and submit ourselves, our spirits to you, that you would pull from this audience those who you're calling tonight. And all praise will be yours, Lord. And we'll go out of here tonight feeling that the same morning star, a heavenly gift is leading us deeper depths and higher heights to Jesus Christ. For we ask it in his name and for his glory. Amen. If thou canst believe. Amen. Radio audience, into this visible audience, if I'm taught right in the Word of God, I believe that there's gifts in the church to speak with tongues and to interpret. There's no Bible student that can condemn that. When it's done orderly after the message is over, it's orderly. You see what it said, the Lord in the midst and so forth. Now how true that is. May the Lord add his blessings. These things one time when I was still a young Baptist minister, I didn't understand this. But after reading the scriptures, I see that it's the truth. The Lord be blessed. Look this way. Touch the garment of the high priest now with your faith. If I be a servant of Christ, let Christ speak. Now is the time of the hour of decision. Now is the time where something has to be right or wrong. What good would it do me to preach to you a historical God that stood on the banks of Galilee and done those things if he isn't the same God today? I've claimed that he was. I cannot heal people. Everyone knows that. But what spirit was it here the other night that could see a suffering person all the way across the seas and could come here and speak and tell that woman perfectly what was going to happen to her loved ones and immediately here come the message back across the seas. God had did it. 
Can't you wake up, friends, to a fact that it's a living God that's in our midst? I'm afraid, as I said the other night, so many gifts has been brought before the church till they sit staring paralyzed. Oh, it ought to shake the heart of people until they would rejoice and be so glad. Here, look this away just a moment. Right over in this direction here, I see a little woman. I do not know her, but she's praying. She's wearing a little flat hat. And she's suffering, and over her stands that light. She's suffering with her, something wrong with her eyes and her ears. I'm afraid the woman is not catching who I'm speaking of. Lord God, say something or do something and she won't miss it. Her name is Mrs. Allen. All right, do you believe that you will be healed? Then rise and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, be thankful. That's the way to do it. Just back over in this other section here, a little woman sitting with her hand up praying. And she is suffering with the, there's something wrong with her head. And she's got asthma in her throat and a heart condition. Sitting right here looking right at me, her name is Mrs. Henry. She come from Santiago. The Lord has blessed you. Go home and be well. Your faith has made you whole. If thou canst believe. I do not know these people. I've never seen them in my life. What is it, friends? Now, don't go thinking something mysterious. It's the promise of God. Jesus Christ, as I go towards that wall, my shadow from a light shadow becomes more positive and positive until it fades into perfect me. And as the coming of the Lord is coming to the earth, His presence is drawing closer and closer until we'll finally blend into Him. The Spirit will take us with Him. That day you'll know that I am in you and you and me and I and the Father and Father, so forth. You just have faith and believe. Here, a little lady sitting there nodding her head. Right here looking at me, about second row there. You're suffering with a scientist trouble. That is right. Of course you don't have a prayer card, do you? There's no prayer card. And you're just sitting there praying. And I see you with headaches and rubbing your head like this. And you are praying, Lord Jesus, I believe it. If that's right, raise up your hand. How would I know what you was praying for? You won't have it no more. Jesus Christ makes you well. You touch the high priest. Sitting right here in front of me, a few rows back, a little thin looking woman holding her hand to her throat. I'm a stranger to her, but she's shattered to death. She has cancer. She's been operated on, and her throat's closed up. She can't neither eat nor drink. That's thus saith the Lord. I don't know you, but you were praying. God heal you, my sister. You accept your healing. You've touched the garment of the high priest. Right straight back the back of this place here, about middle ways of this aisle. There's a little, there's a woman, and she's suffering with a high blood pressure. 
she she's not from here she's a Finn she's from Finland if you believe sister you receive your healing you Malin Raha rise up to your feet and accept your healing and be made well God bless you Get us, Jesus. Hallelujah. What was I saying? <laughs> If thou canst believe. Tell that little lady laying there with arthritis, have faith in God, and get up from that cot and go on home. Away up in the balcony there. There's a lady praying. There's something wrong with her, her ear. It's behind her ear. A mastoid trouble. She's ready for an operation. If you might know who it is, your name is Mrs. Delaney. Rise up to your feet, Mrs. Delaney, and accept your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. What did she touch? God's great Holy Spirit, the high priest of our confession. Do you believe that He's here? Then stand up to your feet and receive Him, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up and believe Him with all your heart. Raise up your hands now as we pray. O oh Lord God, who sent the morning star who gave us Jesus Christ in the resurrection. His power here with us now. I condemn unbelief and break the power of the devil through prayer, confessing that an angel of God came to me 14 years ago and confirmed this manifestation. And we stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, you are defeated. Jesus Christ defeated you with His vicarious suffering and death at Calvary. Come out of this place and away from these people that they can be made well through Jesus Christ's name. Rise up. Praise Him. Raise your hands to Him. It's over. Jesus died. Jesus arose. Jesus is here. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I give you over to Jesus Christ and this spirit is here. There's no need for you to be sick any longer or sinful any longer. God bless you.